Lecture, A World of Art, Part 1, The Visual World, 7th Edition, by Henry M. Sayer, pages 1 through 18. Instructor, Inga Kimberly Brown. Art, what does it mean to create in a visual language? Yes, art is a visual language, and so much more. In the textbook, A World of Art, by Henry M. Sayre. Sayre compares artwork from various artists and their meaning through process in their chosen mediums. Sayre proves there's so much more than just viewing amazing works of art by beauty alone. Sayre proves that art has a message and that artists speak through the work. Sayre wants us to question what is the role of the artist and what do artists offer our society the artist ignites act of seeing or re-seeing the familiar in a new way. Kai Go Kang, born in China, 1957, is not just throwing fireworks in the air and calling it art. Go Kang is a New York-based artist, and he has chosen fireworks to act as a medium in his public art. Kai Go Kang's artwork is rooted with a message or statement I would say most artworks have various meanings. The viewer can choose on how they connect. In 2008, Kaigo Kang's footsteps was chosen by the Chinese government to be the open and closing installation for the 29th Olympic Games held in Beijing, China. The full name of the installation was entitled Footsteps in History, Fireworks Project. This was a great opportunity for an artist. Just imagine that it is the year 2008, Beijing, China, not far from Tiananmen Square, the Olympic Stadium sits. The Bird's Nest Stadium holds 91,000 seats and resembles a large refined bird's nest and is a functional piece of art for the city by Herzog and de Moran. It is exactly 8.08 in 8 seconds p.m. in Beijing, China, and the bird's nest is full of spectators for the 29th Olympic Games. The date is August 8th, 2008, also noted the eighth year of the 21st century. Kaigo Kang's Footsteps in History Fireworks Project fills the sky with fireworks that form into 29 footprints above the bird's nest and the city. The 29 footsteps leading away from the infamous Tiananmen Square speaks a volume of history and politics and evolving future of the world and Beijing. It is also said that the number eight is a lucky number in China. With the Olympic Games being held in China in such a moving opening, Kai Ko Kang makes a statement through his art for sure. Footsteps talks about the past China as the footsteps that lead away from the lost lives at Tiananmen Square in 1989 that the government of China was assumed responsible for. So who is walking away in Go Kang's footsteps? The fireworks have been a staple of Chinese celebration since the years of its creation in China 600 to 900 AD. The 29 footsteps that graze the sky could be inspired by the world going into 29 centuries of the Olympic Games. The work shows so much depth and passion. And once the viewer becomes curious, the actual footworks become an entry point into the more depth of the concept and process. Goi Kang's work represents China as a whole. The work symbolizes a unity of going forward with footsteps away from Tiananmen Square and the bloody memories of a massacre that happened there. Go Kang's work seems like a unification and a soft apology from the Chinese government and nudging the country away from the bloody memoirs of Tiananmen Square and moving forward to the future. But this is how I have interpreted the work. You can come to your own conclusion of the work. 
The various video from people's cell phones and television cameras, as well as photographs, help document footsteps in real time. The artist is now an inventor and explorer. But Sarah does not leave Beijing, China, and the 29th Olympic Games just yet. There is another Chinese-born New York-based artist, Zhang Hongtu, born in 1943. Zhang had a painting on its way to be displayed at the German embassy in Beijing during the Olympics, but the painting was seized by Chinese officials. Zhang Hongtu created a painting entitled Bird's Nest in the Cubism style. The painting has some text in English and Chinese and French. Uh, the palette was of neutral beige and brown and black. The Chinese government seized the painting to study it more before letting it pass to the German embassy. Zhang Hongtu's bird's nest not only got its name after the national stadium bird's nest, the Chinese saw that his work was more of a hidden message to the viewer and directly to China as a protest piece against China. In Zhang's bird's nest, the viewer could see the word Tibet, a country ruled by China. An ongoing dispute has been going on between the two countries for years. Chinese rule has been accused of mistreatment of the Tibetan people. So, just on the left of the painting and slightly lower than the word Tibet is painted human rights in bold lettering. The palette and style of Zhang Hongtu's painting is an ode to painter Georges Bruque, born 1882, past 1963. The painting is Soda, Paris, Spring, 1912, oil on canvas. In fact, as a viewer, I would think from the viewing the two paintings side by side, Zhang was in direct dialogue with Georges Bourquet's painting Soda when he created Bird's Nest. The Chinese government passed on Zhang's painting. The Bird's Nest, citing the, the color palette, was not appropriate for the event, so it did not make it to the German embassy either. The process of the art... And what the artist is saying or commenting on is in the work itself. Documenting is a large aspect of what artists do in their studio, when, which may be inspired by wanting to recreate a memory or people from their memories that include a time or place. Sayer points us to the image of the statue Pat, uh, done in 1982, painted cast plaster. Uh, by John Edhern, uh, born in 1951, and Rigoberto Torres, born in 1960. Pat is a bust of a loved neighbor, and it's hard not to interact visually with this work. Uh, Pat becomes everyone's neighbor or auntie. She becomes a familiar or someone, a someone to everyone. Below the image of Pat, Sarah has placed an image of Nan Golden, born in uh, 1953. Uh, Cookie, at, Cookie at Ten Pan Alley, New York City, 1983, for multimedia installation. Sarah d displays the two images together, pressing the idea of human memories, which emphasizes artist as the record keeper or documentarian of our society. We go to an image of an orange pea pod that is actually a coffin created in 1970. Artist Seth Kane Quay, born 1922 and passed in 1992 at the Teshi tribe in Ghana, Africa, made functional art as well as amazing miniatures of real life commissioned coffins made from familiar objects like cars, or coffin art made to look like vegetables or pea pods or even airplanes. And then there's Jasper Johns, born 1930, three flags created in 1958, are critical to look at amazing contributions to critical thinking. These works make us take another look at what we thought was familiar. Sarah asks, what do we know about the American flag? Besides, it's very familiar, but 
Do you know the proportions? Do you even know without looking what stripe, what color stripe is at the flag's top or what color is at the bottom? This is challenging to the viewer at times. They want an instant explanation when the artist making the viewer do the work and look deeper at the meaning of what the artist means to say in the piece. Look at the image there included by Faith Ringgold. Born in 1930, God Bless America, created in 1963. Oil on canvas. Immediately, Faith Ringgold shows us the inspired American flag and an older white woman's face who is also holding a star as a badge rather than one of the stars representing a state on the original flag. Ringgold goes Bold in using the figure to make the painting talk about who has power in the United States and how power, how that power is used by the government and state. The painting is an open dialogue. Sarah is asking us to relook or reignite active seeing when looking at art. Sarah reminds us that there are many dialogues within one piece of artwork that can elevate our minds past fear and prejudices and on to infinite possibilities of problem solving and perspectives when studying an, an art piece. Well, Henry M. Sayers goes even further with the concept of pattern use when he writes about the Karori kimono from the Middle Edo period circa 1700 and compares patterns to the work architects are creating with green architecture. Green arch architecture is eliminating steel and glass from the building materials. The commonality of the two is the inspiration of pattern, the functional art in the contemporary world, and that which springs from the past. The silk kimono is brocaded with silver and gold threaded scenes of autumn leaves and grass. The original Rory kimono was at one time worn by a male actor who played a, fe a, a part of a female in the Japanese no theater. The Karori kimono is functional art. The kimono is made to be worn on the body and it is art. Artistic patterns made into 3D form are becoming more functional in the contemporary landscape of green architecture and beyond. Here, nature and art inspire the creations of the contemporary buildings made from bamboo and other materials that define green architecture instead of glass and steel. There are 10 new bamboo pavilions designed by architect Renzo Piano that were created to represent the Kanak dwellings in the local area of the Jean-Marie Jibou Cultural Center in Noumea, New Caledonia, an island in the South Pacific. These green architecture-inspired pavilions represent functional art. Talking about wearing art, Sayers takes us further in with Cuban performance artist Tania Bruguera, born 1968, who dressed up as an Nakisik Nakonda in August 1998. The Nakisi are figures created out of wood, iron, nails, glass and resin that date back to Congo and Zaire in late 19th century. There is an Akisi, which is now a museum artifact in the University of Iowa. The female Nakisi figure created by the Congo people in Zaire is 20 inches high, 11 inches wide, and 8 inches in depth. So what is an Akisi really? And why would this be performance art of Bruguera have intentions of engaging with the public of Havana? Would it have the same effect in Japan? During the colonization of Africa, the people of Zaire created these figures to hold power from or a connection of or to the spirit world. These figures were to help the people of Congo with faith and guide them out of this brutal colonization from Europe. Europeans saw the figures as evidence of an aggressive native opposition to colonial control. Europeans destroyed many of the figures, seeing them as power figures. 
The figures and cultures are familiar to the places of Africa and the Caribbean today because of the Atlantic slave trade. Cuba was one of the last places in the Americas or the New World to to stop the importing of African slaves, and this allowed cultures from Africa to flourish on the island and remain intact throughout slavery and beyond. Cuba abolished slavery in 1886, but did not stop importing slaves until 1887. In fact, some African languages are mixed into Spanish language spoken there. In Cuba, African culture can be seen everywhere in the people, the music and food, dance, as well as religion and storytelling. Well, Tania Bruguera dressed up as a Nikisit Nikonda and stood still in the lobby of the Wilfredo Lam Center of Contemporary Art in Havana. Then she wandered the city as if she were looking for those who broke promises made to the icon in return for help. So in the act of Tania Bruguera being dressed as a historical, spiritual, and cultural figure, usually made from wood, now walking through the streets of of Havana, do the people understand? Well, then the kissy in Cuba is familiar to many, or they relate to it as an African object, and that is quickly related to slavery. So to see this Nikisi Nakanda just walking down the street, one must take a double look. But just like Kai... Go Quang's footsteps. The public was somewhat familiar with the reference of history in the work for the work to really be successful, but only after the entry point of the work is recognized. But nonetheless, the public becomes part of the work and a witness to its documentation because the work demands engagement. Art talks and it moves people to come to terms with what is organic within them.